Welcome to this brand new episode of the Marketing Technology Podcast. This podcast is hosted by Mark van Horek and myself, Elias Krum. We're both from Marketing Guys, a MarTech agency based out of the Netherlands. So welcome to the Marketing Technology Podcast, Paul Johnson. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. We're delighted to have you here, Paul. So, Paul, you're with Lock Me In. Can you explain to our listeners what you do at Lock Me In and why you are so uh, so happy at working for Lock Me In? Yeah, of course. I am the, uh, the director of marketing technology and operations um, here at Lock Me In. I I roll up under the marketing operations org. Um, we have a, a, a a semi-large uh, marketing operations organization, and my team is one of them. Um, and my team focuses on the evaluation, the onboarding, and the renewals, uh, as well as um, getting buy-in of all marketing technology across the organization. So when when we're speaking about Log Me In, which brands are f- fall under under Log Me In? You have multiple brands there, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, LogMeIn owns a handful of, of technologies. Um, some of them uh, fall, would fall into the marketing technology or, or, or category, um, including uh, GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar. Um, and then we um, we also have tools like LastPass, GoToMyPC, Rescue Assist, uh, and a handful of others that um, are all technology based. Okay, so. Um, director of marketing technology. That's a relatively new job description, I, I would guess. Um, quite a cool one. Actually. Quite a cool one. So uh, I think a lot of listeners would like to be a director of marketing technology. Um, what what brought you here? What you, so what did you do before before in your career? Yeah, good question. So I've been in marketing operations for years, and I. Um, came to log me in through a company called Jive Communications. Jive was acquired by log me in two and a half years ago. I was part of that acquisition. I came on to Jive. Um, let's see, I, w- I was at Jive for, for over two years prior to the acquisition and started their marketing operations department. Uh, Jive was a, a, a fairly uh, interesting company in the sense that it was 10 years old they had done, they almost had zero marketing technology. They had they had emailed zero people before I got there. They had done zero email, you know, zero email marketing, um, very little marketing in general. Uh, and so when I got there, you know, eight years into their journey, uh, they were starting, um, they were really ramping up in their marketing efforts. Um, prior to that, they had focused a lot on sales and product. Uh, and then they finally felt like they had a, a product that they wanted to, you know, shout from the rooftops to the world. Uh, and so, you, you know, I started their marketing operations department. It was it was really, um, you know, there was a lot of low hanging fruit when I got there as, you know, the second I got there, we, we signed a, a contract with Marketo. Um, we got that up and running as fast as possible. And we, you know, we saw unbelievable open rates and, and click rates in our emails. And, you know, not that that's the only important uh, metric, obviously. But um, it was telling immediately that people wanted to hear from, uh, you know, wanted to hear from Jive. They had a lot of, uh, you know, again, a lot of low hanging fruit. They had customers that really wanted to hear from them. Um, there was tons of engagement in all customer marketing efforts. Uh, and then also they had, they, they really focused hard on, 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 you know, bottom of the funnel leads. And uh, all of those people were excited to hear from us. So it was, it was a, a cool adventure to start their Marketo instance onboard a handful of other tools into the into the MarTech stack and, um, you know, get things like marketing analytics off the ground. Um, we we ha- I had a couple of web developers on my team. Um, I own the marketing budget. Uh, and then that uh, led to the acquisition uh, two and a half years later, <coughs> or a little over two years later, um, to log me in. And through that acquisition, I, I almost immediately joined the, they all, all had already developed a marketing technology um, team, and I joined that team, and then uh, uh, as of you know six months ago, I'm now the leader of that team. Wow! So that's that's actually a nice intro to my next next question, Paul. Because um, when they already had a marketing technology team, they must have a lot of tools. So can you explain a little on the Martech stack over at Log Me In? Yeah, you know, I as I've as I've spent time in this role. 
it's been so enlightening. Uh, you know, LogMeIn's a, a fairly large organization with you know around four thousand employees, um, and and I you know I, I can't imagine an organization this large or or any larger without a dedicated marketing technology team. We have about sixty five tools in our stack, um, and that ranges from you know tools uh, as large as uh, a, a marketing automation platform that handles millions and millions of records uh, down to something small like um, an SEO tool that, that we're spending $50 a month on, something like that. Uh, so 65 tools in the stack. Uh, and, and, you know, as I mentioned, without the dedicated resource to, ha- to um, handle this technology, there would be redundancies across the board um, all over the place. Uh, and the technology would not be well utilized. Okay, um, so when you when you have over sixty tools and you have like a wide, wide spread of all kinds of different tools, could you mention some tools that stand out for you that really make the difference? Yeah, you bet. Um, <clears throat> we have we have a large you know a large number of tools that are that are very impactful. Um, I'll mention uh, just a handful off off the cusp. As I go down uh, down the list, but um, Marketo is, is really the the main driver and, and the core of our stack. We have we have one of the largest Marketo instances in the world. We're a very large customer of theirs, um, partially because some of our some of our products like LastPass are, are almost B 2 C focused, and and we're getting you know thousands of records um, each day uh, that that flow into the into the platform. <laughs> um, other tools that are that are important to us, I'll just I'll just name a, a handful of them. Um, you know, demand base uh, and you know demand base and a plan. Um, good data, uh, influitive. Um, let's see, um, mixed panel and intercom are are another couple. Uh, let's see. So intercom, you're using, you, you're, sorry to interrupt you, but intercom you're using as a as a chatbot or for other purposes? Intercom we're using as, um, yeah, uh, it's a third-party tool we're using for in-app messaging. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Sorry, so I interrupted you. You were not ready yet with your uh, your extensive list. So, <laughs> so go ahead. Oh, top, top six. No, right. no, you're great. We also use, in, in addition to demand base, we use Terminus. Um, we use, uh, you know, one that's, well, I guess I'll save this answer. I, I think we have a, a question later on about a couple of unknown tools that we use. Yep. Um, and then, you know, all of our um, sites are built on, on Sitecore. And so that's that's another tool that we use. And then, uh, and, and TrustArc for cookie management. So those are just a handful of, of ones that I'll mention. Okay. Um, Paul, and you got a lot of uh, tools, 65. Um, is it a challenge to get the information connected? Because yes. um, what we've noticed is that it's great to have tools, but if you don't integrate them, then it's very difficult to have a very good overview of what your data is and what it represents. Yeah, that's a great question. I think it is. It is hard. Um, and, and that's another reason uh, to have a dedicated marketing technology team is the the integrations are are incredibly vital, and 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 so powerful. Um, and without them, you really lose. I, I don't know fifty percent of, of what you could get from a from a specific tool, or whatever that percentage may be. But it's a lot. Um, so you, you know, part of our job is focused on those integrations and how we can help each tool improve other tools' performance. Um, right now, we are we're in the process of onboarding a, a customer data platform. Um, Blue Conic is the vendor that we chose, and this is uh, one of the main use cases here was really to get to combine a lot of these tools' efforts and nice. to be able to see a comprehensive, um, you know, a, a really a comprehensive layer of, of the customer and the prospect in one platform. I right, so so actually, I think Blue Conic is has its roots in in the Netherlands. Actually, I think. Because they're based out of Boston for the for the U.S., but yeah. they're they're like co-owned by a company in the Netherlands. So it's always nice to hear that, that the Netherlands are still playing a, a little role internationally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really, you know, in this onboarding process, we are we're we're in love with Blue Conic and we're excited for what they're going to do for us. 
Nice. Um, Paul, integrations are, uh, it's, it's difficult and it's a lot of hard work, but if you get improvement in your results, then all the hard work is worthwhile. Is that what you've noticed that when you got Bluconic and you've, you've integrated the parts that could be integrated, could you see an uplift in, in results and, and insights getting from that data? Absolutely. You know, I'll speak to, I'll speak to Marketo as we're, as we're really early in the journey with Bluconic, but um, in Marketo, every integration we add there, that's, that's, you know, that's meaningful. It, it, it adds an incredible amount of value. Uh, and we have, you know, our automation teams do a, a, an excellent job of, of utilizing the data from those integrations in things like nurtures and blasts uh, and events and, and, and so on uh, in, in segmentation and, and, and so, and so on. So, we, uh, yes, each integration in Marketo is incredibly vital. So um, I, I would say, uh, and you already mentioned it, um, you, you are one of the uh, most uh, important or biggest Marketo customers worldwide. Um, first of all, I'd like to know how, how what well, might have been before your time, but do you know anything uh, about the selection procedure? So. One of your competitors, for example, or former competitors, Bomgar, it's now Beyond Trust, I think. They're one of the founding, let's say, uh, customers of Eloqua, of Oracle, and you, you guys have Marketo. So how did you end up selecting Marketo? Do, do you yeah, know anything great question. about that? It was, it was somewhat of a natural selection as we, you know, LogMeIn is really a company of acquisitions. And we, you know, at a, at a certain time we had four or five automation platforms that we were running out of because of all these acquisitions um and one of those was a large one of those was marketo and you know there were other things that went into the decision but um the the value that we saw out of marketo out of the one one of the automation platforms that we were running out of led us to led us to believe that it was the right you know the right choice for log me in so you know that that went into a very large project of consolidating all automation platforms onto one very large Marketo instance, uh, and it was a lot of work. It took a lot of time, but it was very worth it. Okay, so now that you, you are one of the biggest customers, can you can you share some best practices? And Mark Mark is dying to ask a question here, so let me let me. Yep. Mark is hinting me. Yeah. Yeah. No. no. I can imagine if I'm listening to this podcast and log me in, okay, log me in. But why is log me in the biggest customer for Marketo? What is it all because of last pass or some? Uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm really curious to know what was happening of what happened that you've become uh, the biggest. Was that because you've got a lot of data and a lot of customers or is it that you've actually um, involved more and more processes within Marketo, and that's the way you became the biggest. I'm just curious to know yeah. which route. That's a really good question. It's a combination of both. Um, so we have <coughs> we have products that uh, y y you know many of our products are are trial based, and and then as I mentioned before, um, LastPass is is somewhat consumer focused. Uh, and so a combination of those, and when you look at a product like GoToMeeting, which can also be um, somewhat consumer based with, especially in, in times of COVID, uh, where we saw a ginormous, you know, spike in, in purchase um, and in trials uh, of our product GoToMeeting as, as Zoom did. We, um, you know, with those factors combined, we're seeing thousands and thousands of trials come in for our products each day. And all of those trials are, are flowing through Marketo into Salesforce. Um, and then on top of that, we have decided to, um, to really have our, our data flow through Marketo into Salesforce. And, and what I mean by that is many companies, uh, you know, many companies that I've seen will um, have Marketo be one of the data sources that flow into Salesforce. And it logged me in almost every single marketing generated source is flowed through Mark. It flows through Marketo. Um, you know, as like I'm saying, um, many companies will have, you know, certain lead vendors or 
certain demand gen efforts directly integrate into Salesforce and then flow back into Marketo, or maybe not. Um, but almost every single lead or, or record flows through Marketo into Salesforce. And so a combination of those is, is really what, what gets us to that number. So Paul, actually you're using Marketo as like a, a, like a, a, like a hub. Yeah, okay. I would, yeah, yeah. So yeah, all the data. So every every other market Martech tool delivers all their data to Marketo. That processes it, and then that combines that with Salesforce, so that you have actually two big players there. And and uh, Blueconic now, of course. Yeah, Blue, yeah, Blueconic. Yeah. I think that Blueconic is going to be really where you you store all the data because you've got a huge amount. So. I, you, you were just mentioning, and we're still, well, you're in America, and we're in the Netherlands, and uh, COVID-wise, it looks like a, a two different walls at this moment. But could you say that if you didn't have Marketo and the way that you had these processes, would you would you have been able to cope with such an un, unpredicted search? Absolutely not. You know, it's something that I've screamed from the rooftops internally here at Log Me In is, uh, <clears throat> you know, as we saw these surges in, in March with, um, you know, demand gen for some of these remote products and really across the board at Log Me In, uh, because we're, we're, we're so cloud based and, and, and uh, technology based, we would, you know, Marketo, we had done such a good job. And I'll brag about um, someone on my team, Michael Florin who uh, is based out of Germany and is our product owner for Marketo, has engineered our, our Marketo instance in a way that it can handle um, this surge and, and it's done such a, such a good job. Um, just a, another brag for Marketo, it's done such a good job of handling this, this large surge in data. Yeah, well, uh, now, very often mar marketing automation seems very complex and, and is a lot of work and a lot of hassle and so but when you know, how do you say it? when that the dot dot hits the fan it's that marketing automation that marketing technology that stands firm and helps you through uh, through a crisis so yeah. um so I, th I think marketo played a big role there so i'm curious also to hear because you, you, of course so the the whole scenario with trials and drip campaigns after that etc is very well manageable at large scale within Marketo. So that's cool to hear that it even works at, let's say, millions and millions of uh, records. Um, what other add-ons or specific use cases do you have within Marketo? Do, do you use like personalized content or social or you, you probably have them all, but uh, are there some features or add-ons that you would like to uh, little uh, elaborate a little on? Yeah, yeah, I think... Um you know, one of the reasons I'll go back to one of the reasons, another reason that our, our Marketo instance is so large is we operate, you know, many companies are, are larger or have more records than, than LogMeIn does in, in their marketing automation world, but they separate it into, into multiple instances. And, and there's a couple examples of that. LogMeIn, as I, as I said, uses one Marketo instance and we have, uh, you know, going or going to the use cases that you're mentioning, we've got 15 or or 15 or 16 scoring models in in our Marketo instance. Uh, as each record comes in, we we push each record through uh, about 15 flow steps of of an you know an on onboarding or, or an intake flow that normalizes, enriches, cleanses uh, the data. And then identifies which product the this particular interest at this time is interested in, and then you know uh, routes it to that specific scoring model, uh, and then onto Salesforce um, as as necessary. So that's that's one of the reasons, but it's also something unique. This this uh, intake flow that we have is order of operations, as we call it. Uh, inside of our Marketo instance is very unique and it's and it's incredibly helpful. I would advise anybody who, who has a Marketo instance to have an onboarding flow for each record that comes into sale into Marketo, uh, whether it's new or an old record that's coming in for a second, third, fourth, fifth time. Yeah. Okay. 
so <clears throat> the, um, you're, you're using the whole segmentation there, the capabilities of lead scoring, which is pretty unique, right? Because uh, a lot of marketing automation uh, platforms just have one lead scoring model or sheet, um, and you're using uh, over 10 uh, sheets. Um, let's let's move a little away from Marketo because that's, that's I got, I got one oh, last Mark one. wants to ask one one more question about Marketo. Yeah. I'm always dying to 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 speed ahead, but you know, Mark, go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> this I'm about this chance uh, pass by. No, um, we always say with uh, marketing automation, you want to use marketing automation because that will help you to send the right message to the right person at the right time. You've got it so optimized and so. Um, is that absolutely the case in, in, in your case? And do you get, and that's very, the most curious question, do you get feedback from users, from people that receive your messages that they say, gosh, this is right on, uh, um, you're, you're really helping. You, the messages that you're sending me is relevant. I think they won't say it that way, but are you actually experiencing marketing automation, Wahala? <laughs> we, um, we, we try really hard, you know, we try hard to, to make sure our automation platform where, where we have these millions upon millions of records, uh, where we can identify who each person is, where they are in, you know, in the cycle, um, and what type of message they should receive and when. And I think we do a pretty good job of it, you know, especially considering, uh, the complexity of the account with, with, um, so many different products, uh, being marketed and, uh, in different, in many different ways, um, Logmein set up into right now is set up into three different business units, and each of them have, uh, you know, in certain ways, you know, regarding automation, they have different strategies, and so navigating that in a, in, in a platform creates complexity in its own. Uh, but I would say we do a good job. You know, we we use um, going back to that order of operations. We, I just want to mention a couple of tools because you were asking about some tools that integrate there. We use um, Demandbase and Clearbit and uh, Discover Org to cleanse or to cleanse and enrich these records. We use Return Path to uh, identify if we should be emailing someone or not. Uh, and then, in you know, in regards to your question about replies, we use a, a tool called Siftrock. <laughs> Uh, to as a, an email reply management tool, and we do see, we do receive some good feedback there um, in regards to our emails. Uh, we have we have some we have you know our automation uh, experts are, are monitoring those replies and, and receive good good uh, feedback. I got one last question, and then you can go. Erna. Um, marketing out this whole process that you've had that is not something that happened overnight, did it? This no, absolutely some, not. This, yeah, it's, it's, this is purely for people who think with marketing automation, this is a turn oh, the ignition it, key in. Yeah, turn the ignition. And three months later, we've got something similar. To get to those intake paths and so, how long did it take to create those? Yeah, good question. So we had, <laughs> it took us an entire year to migrate automation platforms into the one large Marketo instance. And then, and then after it was combined, we focused on that, that jive migration, which had happened a year, pri uh, a year prior and, and added that to the, the new log me and Marketo instance. And so overall it took, um, it took, you know, well over a year to get, to get us all into one platform uh, yeah, so to where we were feeling. Yeah. So it took, a, it took a long time. Yeah. Well, um, I, it depends on what you think is long. It's it's all about perception, right? And uh, managing expectations. Yeah. But it's worse yes. worthwhile. So and it's managing expectations. What we say to people when they start using Marketo, you know, the first year the only thing you're gonna get to is insights and data. You know, that's the that's the main goal for year one, what we hear from most Marketo users. And after that, you're gonna get see results, uh, run your campaigns, etc. You're gonna uh, see your ROI. But you know, it's it is gonna take you a year to let's say, have everything in place the way you want it. And, yes, even, no. and even then it needs, uh, needs uh, a, a lot of attention, of course, but it's, it's bringing you results. And um, speaking about those results, so, um, 
We're in the marketing te- on the Marketing Technology Podcast, and uh, listeners would probably also want to hear some of the tools you are using that are my- maybe less well-known, um, some little secrets that uh, secretive or secret, uh, let's say, uh, stuff that you would like to share or some tips from inside yeah. that you as a marketing technology expert might want to share with the audience. Who would you... Who little player do you want to do a shout out for? Yeah, I'll mention two people. One of them is, I'll go back to Sift Rock. Uh, you know, this is an incredibly um, off the beaten path, but a lot of people who have automation platforms are not using an email reply management tool. And it makes a, it makes a large difference. Uh, you know, Sift Rock doesn't only monitor replies and allow you to see replies to all of your Marketo emails but it also mines for additional contacts or, or the contact that you have on hand and, and if the information changes and it can create those records in Marketo. And so <clears throat> if someone replies and says, hey, I'm out of town, um, if you need me, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to John Doe at, you know, who is my manager yeah. at blah, 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 blah dot com. Um, Siftrock can can mine that contact and push it into Marketo and, and create a new record for you in Marketo, oh, that's uh, cool. which is you know very valuable. Yeah, it's extremely oh, yeah. valuable. So that's one tool, um, Siftrock, and then the other that I would mention is Vertify. Um, we use a tool called Vertify to help us with uh, custom objects in Marketo, and it's one one last thing I wanted to bring up in regards to Marketo is our custom is our use of custom objects. Uh, we're heavily, heavily involved in custom objects in, in our Marketo instance. And we use them uh, primarily for customer marketing. Uh, we have a custom object for each of our products in Marketo. And then we flow data through AWS into Marketo uh, into these custom objects um, to populate things like for, uh, you know, example would be our go-to meeting custom object. We have um, when the person signed up for, for go to meeting, if it's a trial or if it's a paid, paid user, when was their last meeting? How many total meetings have they had, uh, and additional data so we can really, um, segment and, and personalize emails to these people based on their usage of the, of the, um, platform. And we have, you know, we have data like that for, for all products in, in our market instance, and, and we use, um, Vertify to help with with some of these custom objects that we are bringing data in for. Okay, so we're definitely going to put that in the show notes, uh, Paul. So those two basically uh, little insider tips that you that you shared with us. The final question that we have is is about Log Me In itself. So what would B two B marketers what what could they do with your product at the moment? Because they're absolutely useful. There's been a search for your product, but um, what 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 is it that uh, benefits them most in these Corona COVID times? Yeah, I think Log Me In has done. You know, it's become clear because we are so invested in our own products and and the use of them, how impactful they have been during this quarantine time, uh, and and I speak particularly, especially of the early quarantine, but even now there is no pain and rush to get back to the office because we are so focused on these technologies that enable us to work hard from home um, and and work seamlessly from home <laughs> go to meeting uh, you know many many people on this call or, or who are listening either have go to meeting or a pro- product like it like it like zoom or, or um, one of the other tools and they're game changers I, you know I think all of us have probably said to someone, in the last three months, I can't imagine going through this 15 years ago without video conferencing solutions or or other technologies. So that that's huge. And then, you know, from a marketing standpoint, uh, you know, I would I'd advise everyone to check out GoToWebinar. Um, it's a great webinar platform that coincidentally um, integrates with Marketo. You can bring uh, registrants and attendees directly in from GoToWebinar into Marketo um, and push them with with the program status into Marketo. Uh, and it's a great tool. We use it. 
We use it for all our digital events. And that's actually very relevant. We had a chat with it um, on the one of the former episodes. But what we also use GoToWebinar for is um, pushing actually the poll and chat result data from GoToWebinar into segments within Marketo. So yes. if, you, if you're polling within, a, so you're really using a webinar for lead qualification and uh, personalizing content um, afterwards based on the answers people gave in chats or questions they asked in the chat. So that's that's a possibility uh, which pe not a lot of people are using yet, but it's absolutely very useful. Yes, yes, I couldn't agree more and I'm biased, I know, but- uh, Yeah, but well, so are we. We love it. it we, of course, <laughs> no, but it, it's basically, to be honest, as we said it in the podcast about those webinars, you know, invest in a good webinar tool like go to webinar because you know they make the difference polling within within some some uh, webinar tools is not even possible you know that, that that kind of stuff but hey paul i would like to thank you very much for being on the on the marketing technology show um probably we'll have uh, we'll shout out to you and uh would like to have you back in a, in probably a year or so but for now we're going to share all your data, the links that you mentioned in the show notes. We'll put in your LinkedIn profile so people might reach out to you to connect. But thank you very much for your time. Yes, thank you very Absolutely. much for all the insights, uh, Paul. Thank you both. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Marketing Technology Podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform or iTunes. Also, if you want to be a guest or know someone that should be a guest to our show, shoot me an email on e.crum at marketingguys.nl. Thank you for listening.